All right, hey folks. I think we're up and going here. Uh, this is still kind of a new run for me. Let's see if we can see what we can see. Yeah, looks like we got some uh, output going. Yep, there we go. Okay, cool. So stuff's running. I like it. We're gonna see how this goes. Uh, I'm gonna look at the video later, but I think it looks to me on the monitor that I'm looking at that the um, text in the in the window here is kind of blurry. Um, it's not like super awful, but it's blurry. Um, I'm using a new setup. I don't think I've used this before because it took me a little while to figure out how to get it set up, but it looks like I kind of started to, so who knows. But I'm using one of the Elgato um, streaming devices going from my Mac into a PC to then stream, and it looks like like my Mac is really high res. Um, like the, the Mac screen that's mirrored on this screen looks way sharper. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I messed around with it for an hour, um, but like this will go for now. Um, anyways, uh, just gonna mess around a little bit tonight. The, um, the thing that I wanna do is I've got a post that I've been working on for a while now that's kind of me getting back into writing um, after all my bipolar stuff. And um, before, I, like, I, I hope that that post takes off a little bit. Who knows? It may or may not. Um, the, but I want to make sure, so like on my website right now, um, whoops, that was funny. Let's try this. Oh, come on. Uh, okay, the post is actually up, but I need to make some edits to it because um, like all this stuff's changed down here. Um, but right now, like my, tw my Twitter handle isn't on here. And so when I put this up, I would like for if people come here to actually just be able to get to my Twitter account. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and it shouldn't be, I don't, Hopefully it's not too difficult to drop stuff in there. Um, actually, I, I really don't expect it to be. Um, and I've got some, another thing that I might do is, uh, I've got a, well, let's just start with that and then we can go from there and then figure out what, what happens next. Um, so I use Hugo, um, go Hugo, uh, for my website. Um, I used to use a piece of software called Jekyll um, that these are make these make static sites, um, and so basically the way that it works is, um, does that actually go there? Oh yeah, look at that. Um, to for the static site generators, um, the way that this thing works is, you basically just put. Um, actually, let me open this up a little. Uh, yeah, we do it here. Um, you basically just create a directory structure and inside the directory structure you put uh, markdown files um, which uh, these are the, this is a markdown file um, if you know it, like it's just a, a quick way to and so basically what it is is after, when you have a static site generator you make these markdown files or Hugo uses markdown that you could probably use anything with different generators but when you go to um, to write the file, you don't write HTML. And actually what I'm gonna do, so uh, this directory that we're looking at right here, this prod directory, so there's my main site, alanwsmith.com, which is, uh, it's in my woodshed, which is where I keep all my stuff that I'm working on, alanwsmith.com, right? Um, so that is this directory right here. And then you'll see there's the prod, prod target, and all this other stuff that's in there. So that's this. Um, I'm going to throw this to Sublime Text, uh, which I may actually already have a window open. Yeah, I do. Um, hang on, let me just clear this out. I have a few windows open. There we go. Nope, there's that one. Okay. Lots of stuff. Let me, I should have cleared this out more. Um, yes, we're going to save that. Sorry, I should have cleared all this stuff out. Desktop. Uh, great. Students, question, 
that's a thing that a professor friend of mine was talking with his class about that I really liked, so I stole it and I'm gonna talk with him about writing a blog piece about it. Um, so now, uh, we're, in, we're in my um, woodshed directory on alanwsmith.com, which is where I held the, the, the site for the, the Hugo stuff. Um, and actually, the, there's a few different things in here. So the, the real Hugo, the top of the Hugo directory is really this prod directory, this production directory. Um, I had some other stuff here, these drafts and these scripts um, that, and this archive uh, that was moving my all the files from the Jekyll structure to the Hugo structure. Um, so that's what all this stuff is. But the real the real site is, is now sitting in this prod directory. Um, so if we open this up, uh, yeah. uh, the, the place that you store all the files is in this content um, directory. And so the piece that I was working on, and so I've got a few of them. I, I'm not, I don't like the way that this is actually structured. Um, uh, because it, when you get a whole bunch of files, it makes it hard to kind of get the stuff. I don't need to go in and access that stuff necessarily as much, but like, especially if you're using this type of text editor and you're going through the directory structure, it's kind of a pain. Like if I was doing it from, um, especially if you, if you don't remember the name of the thing, but so like, uh, but right now I know that the one that I've, I'm working on is the clicky sound. So I can do the clicky sound. Okay, so now I'm in the clicky sound, right? That's a lot easier to get to. So this this would be the file that I'm looking for. Um, oh, it actually kept it in the same thing. That's cool. I didn't think it would keep the... Oh, I guess it knows that it's in that directory and it opens it up. That's cool. Um, Oh, so here's the clicky sound anyways. So it, it's kind of a pain to get there. I want to mess with that at some other point to see if I can easily uh, structure the directories a little bit easier. So like by date, um, but I don't want the, um, but I still want the file names to be, uh, uh, or the, the URLs to, to just be straight off the root, right? So um, the way that this works is, in our prod directory, it starts with this content. So this is the, the content tree. Um, oops. Let's see if we can get down to, nope. Nope, over, there we go. So this content, this directory structure is what defines what the URL structure is up here. So like, the clicky sound is the name of this directory. Inside there's an index file. You can see that this is the clicky sound URL and inside of it is, that would be an index.html right here if you want to go the full path to it. Um, I don't like that though. I, and I, I'm glad that it does this. Now, now if I really was gonna get what I wanted out of this, you wouldn't actually have the end of the slash there and it would look like that, but that's not how it works. You can, you can do that and it'll fire back over to it. Um, but it always adds that back in there. Um, and that's fine, but like that's one of those nitpicky things that I really like in my old site with Jekyll, I spent a lot of time working on that to make it not happen. Um, and actually right now, um, my old site is still alive without the dub 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 in front of it. Uh, and I think I got these, let me see if I can shorter one. Um, yeah, whatever. Um, is there, I was gonna skip past the suicidal one <laughs> because whatever. Uh, yeah, well, we'll see. Yeah, so see, I didn't, in, in my Jekyll structure, there was no slash at the end of it. And I, I spent, like it took me a little while to figure that out and there, it's kind of some hacky stuff. Um, one of the things that's different about my brain right now or on these meds is I'm less freaked out by that um, or not freaked out, but like I'm less like, oh, it needs to be right. Um, so that's cool. Uh, so this directory structure ends there. So like the other thing we could do is like, so the compact is another one, C-O-M-P-A-C-T. So I remember how to spell that. So if I do this, oops, dash, dash, compact, that should be another site. There you go. Uh, that was from 2006 and the formatting screwed. Okay. Um, 
so the the way that Hugo uh, or the way that static site generators work is so you've you've built all those those markdown files in this case. So you made a directory structure and you put the markdown files in there. And again, the markdown uh, just looks like this, right? So you get a little bit of a header in a YAML format, YAML, um, and then you just uh, basically type paragraphs. Those turn into HTML paragraphs. Um, this little three colons makes a, a level three header. Um, the dash, this will show up as just two dashes. That's not converted. Um, you can put HTML in there, so I want an extra break. Like this three dashes is a horizontal rule, and then this line that's um, surrounded by asterisks turns into italics. Um, so if, like if you, whoops, if you scroll all the way down, like you can see, it's like, so here's a horizontal rule and here's the asterisk stuff, or sorry, it's italics. Um, and if you look at the source code of the page, right, it's, it's actual um, main post. All right, so here's the paragraph tags, um, blah, 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 blah. Here's our H3. Uh, somewhere down there, there's a horizontal rule, and inside this paragraph, there should be M's. Yeah, there you go. So that's, it, it takes all those ASCII text indicators um, that's very lightweight and then migrates it into HTML. Um, and so that's the, it, the conversion from Markdown into HTML. Um, the, and the way that that works is if we go back up to our prod directory, um, do, do, do. so we're in prod right now. Uh, you can build the site by just running the Hugo command. So if I run Hugo, and the, the thing I like about Hugo is how fast it is. Jekyll took 20 to 30 seconds, sometimes longer, to build my site. So every time I made a change, not every time, but like it could take a few seconds just for like one change to show up. Hugo is super fast. Um, it also has a link in, I'll show you in a second. But so this command, just built the site. And so there's now a whole bunch of HTML files um, sitting in this public directory. So if we go back to, um, to our content, which is where we started in the markdown, I'm just gonna open this first one. Uh, uh, that's not a good one, two quarts. There you go, two quarts. So, here is the HTML that we had, or sorry, the, the markdown that we had just sitting in the content directory. When you run Hugo, it builds this public directory and then does the conversion into HTML. So you can see this is now an HTML file and we'll throw it over to Sublime Text uh, just so we can see it. So that's, that does the transition and it does the head like so, and then you have headers and footers in your theme and it does all of that stuff for you. Um, and what's cool about this is you can host this stuff anywhere. Um, it doesn't require like, PHP or um, any type of JavaScript engine, or there's nothing dynamic that has to happen on the server. It's just a straight static file that just, when the browser requests it, the server just gives back that exact file. There's no, um, there's no process that happens on the back end to generate or to, to alter the file in any way. Um, and so one of the things that that makes it is extremely fast. Um, so like, uh, uh, where am I going? Go to my site. So um, uh, watching for errors and rebooting with a bash script, right? So we haven't been to this page, like I haven't been to this page on this browser in since forever, probably never. Um, but so if I click it, you can see it's pretty fast, right? Um, and by pretty fast, I mean, it's really fast. Some of that too is I don't have anything else going on on the page, but a big part of that is because it's a static, um, it's statically served and it's, um, uh, Oh yeah, because it's statically served. Um, so that's it, so domain bot, right? So click, boom, we're there. Um, so that's a big reason I like it. Also, uh, you can now host this stuff on Amazon. Um, so I've got, a, I've got a web server right now that's doing allenwsmith.com without the dub 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 in it. I'm gonna retire that web server and just move everything. You just put it in Amazon S3 buckets and you put um, uh, CloudFront in front of it. These are Amazon services and you can serve a site there. And so I like, I like the idea of serving that um, and getting off of the server. Like I don't wanna have to maintain a server. Um, I've, done, I've maintained servers for years at the very basic level. 
Um, but I want to get out of that business. Um, I don't want to have to deal with them. I don't have to do the security patches. I don't want to have to mess with it. I don't want to have to deal with Apache configs and setting up all that stuff. I just want to serve my site. And I could go to WordPress and make it super simple and do that. But there's that techie level of me where I was like, I want more control than WordPress is going to get me. And also I love the, the, the speed of the static site. And I love the a little bit of that ownership of having, of having the, the techie aspect of it happen. Um, so draw that line wherever you want. Um, I, for basically, if you're, if you're just starting out, especially techie stuff, just get a WordPress blog and, and start blogging there. Like if your goal is to blog, just start WordPress and go. You can then work on your static site generator over on the side, but don't wait for the, don't, don't start your blog with a static site generator because you'll add huge amounts of overhead to actually getting something published. Um, if what you want to do is have something published. So um, I've, I've made that mistake. Um, the, and like, even like publishing on this, like it's, it's also, it's a little bit of a pain to even, even there's a little bit of friction to actually making a new, um, to making a new post. Uh, again, because of that directory structure, um, I had like it, uh, you have to kind of dig in there. Just so like when I make it, there's a command that makes the new structure for you and gives you the new index file, but then you got to go find it. And it doesn't sound like that's a big a deal, but like inside all of this stuff, it's just like, oh, it's got to, like, I can't just open up a browser and write. Um, and so it's just a little bit of friction, but I'm okay with that. And like, I've acknowledged, like now that I've kind of acknowledged it, also the other thing that's cool is now I didn't really realize, but this whole, I, until I just ran this command a second ago, right? When I went into uh, content, not public. Oh, hello, let's try that again. Went to con content, there we go. Uh, whatever, if we go into zip codes, and we go sublime text index of HTML. The fact that that opens here and it still has my directory over here is fantastic. Um, so that's cool. That actually that that makes it less frictiony for me. Um, and it, I find anything I can do to 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 reduce friction is super helpful in getting stuff done. Right. Um, and it's it's amazing how even just the smallest bit of friction which if you look at it without knowing how humans work, seems like, ah, oh, that shouldn't be a problem because it's super easy to overcome that little bit of friction. But it turns out that's not how our brains work. Um, that little bit of friction can turn into a blocker. Um, and so there you go. Uh, when I retire, I haven't looked at any, it's the other, I haven't looked at any of these things in forever. Uh, when I retire, uh, someday, I think I'm gonna shoot for the, wait. I think one thing I'll sh do is shoot for the Wikipedia. Oh, shoot for, sorry, shoot, as in take photographs for Wikipedia. Um, I used to be a photographer, I used to do photography. Um, so anyways, that's all preamble. Um, now what we're gonna do is actually the thing that we talked about, which is, uh, where am I? Where am I? I need a soundboard. Um, no, I don't need a soundboard. Uh, ba, ba, ba. So, oh yeah, so the other thing that we can do is when we go into our prod directory, which is our, our home base, um, we've got uh, another command that we can run, which is hugo serve. Uh, and I'm gonna, uh, let's just do hugo serve for now. Um, and so you're gonna see it builds a site really quickly too, and it gives us some extra stuff here. Um, so, hey, we're watching for changes. Okay, cool. Uh, environment is development, serving pages for memory, fast render mode, blah, 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 blah. Basically what that's doing, not basically, what that's doing is if I go to localhost now on port 1313, it's now serving me the site. Um, so like it's up at allenwsmith.com. This is what the world can see, but then I have my own local copy right here. Um, and so this is where I get to do my work. I can actually do, I, I do all my work here. And then when I'm ready, I promote it up to uh, the, the actual website. And we'll show you how to do that later. Um, the, so the, uh, and let me show you one other thing with that command. So the other thing that we can do with that command, so I'm gonna hit Control C to stop it. 
Um, if we do Hugo serve uh, dash capital D, this is going to build the site with any posts that are still in draft mode showing up. Um, so now what you'll see, uh, so the main site, right, is basically the same as this was, but if I refresh this page now, which is the localhost page, you'll see there's some other posts that are in here. Um, and if we go back to uh, Sublime Text, let's find, all right, I'm gonna just sub command line, because it's easier that way. Nope, uh, another command line. Widget, alnabysmith.com, prod, content, oops, ah, got me again. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna do sublime text for the ones and zero, nope, oh man. Okay, it turned out that that was taking longer. Oh, so, okay, here's the trick. The title doesn't have to be what the um, URL is. I should have moused over this because the title is the ones and zeros, but if you look down in here, the lower left corner, you see that it's just ones and zeros of how computers work, or ones and zeros how computers work. Um, so uh, not them, not them, sublime text. Ones, oh man, okay. Ones and zeros, why didn't that work? Okay, there you go. Okay, that was that took way longer. Um, but what you can see here is in the YAML in the header, um, it says draft is true. Um, so that's the reason this is showing up uh, now here because we turn drafts on. Uh, and what that lets you do, right, is you get to write blog posts uh, in draft. So I could have several of them. So I've got a few of them here uh, that I'm working on that. I still want to be able to publish up to the site, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing this clicky sound one, but I don't want all these other ones to go because they're not ready to go. And the clicky sound one's a little, I fried it a little too soon, but that's fine. Actually, that's not true. I, I did it, but I still am drafting it. I'm still editing it. Um, so anyways, uh, we don't really, like, for what I'm doing now, drafts don't matter one way or the other. Like, they can be on, they can be off. Um, I go back and forth um, between keeping drafts on and keeping drafts off. Um, I Right now, because I'm going to be working with the site, the site, not the text, I'm going to go ahead and just keep the drafts off um, and, and leave them that way. Um, so, yeah, I just, I just deployed the site yesterday, so it's, it's in parity right now. Um, okay, cool. So we're there. The next thing we're going to do is get status because yeah, so, um, I made, wow, that is just blurry, isn't it? Um, get add all those, get commit message, whoops, add the cookie. Well, actually really it's move. From moving fingers to the clicky sound. Cool. Um, this, for my personal site, I don't do a great job of like doing really good refactor. Like, I'm not great at Git. Um, through all my years until very recently, I've been a solo developer, so I and I don't do like super complicated stuff, so. I'm probably not the best person to watch for Git. Um, and if you're, if you're really into Git and you do it hardcore, you're gonna yell at me. Say Uh So what we got? So now what we need to do is figure out where we're going. Um, so the I don't know if I want to use the blind text or not. Um, so Inside a production directory, this this is a Hugo site build. So when you when you build a Hugo site, all this stuff gets built, um, or when you build the Hugo structure, all this stuff gets built, um, and that allows it to produce the website. Uh, and so part of that is the themes. That's where we do all the theming, right? Um, and so inside themes, uh, the initial one that I got, I went through several of them, and the, and the one that I found that I like is tail. Um, 
but then I just made my own copy called tail-aws. Um, AWS, by the way, my initials that I had long before Amazon Web Services came around. So they owe me a royalty, I guess. I should be a billionaire. Um, but inside the theme, you'll have a bunch of different files, right? And so this is where, um, I, mean, I could use sublime text. Um, <laughs> see, that's one of the tricks. Whole bunch of files. Uh, themes. There we go. So here's the stuff. This and I haven't looked at this stuff until in since I've really kind of first did it. Um, and even then, I didn't mess with this stuff much at all. So uh, I'm going to kick around here for a little bit and figure out where stuff is. I'm just kind of guessing it's going to be in layouts, and I'm guessing it's going to be here in header. Um, site title. This may be this may be super fast. So here, here, here. There you go. Uh, and that should show up on all our pages, right? There you go. Right. So this is the header. Um, header menu. I want it. What happens if we go here? Uh, it's still low. Shit. Um, see, this is where I don't know how we're going to do because I'm not good at CSS. I, I just don't do it, really. I haven't done it in a long time. Um, but we're going to play around with it and see what we can see. Um, so looking at the source code, see if I can find... So that H3 looks like it goes all the way across. And that thing's sitting there. But that's a link that goes around the full thing. Why? Nav container. Um, okay, so nav container. Over here. I'm, so this is, I'm sure this is super simple CSS. I just, whatever, it's not, it's not my thing. Um, but we'll see if we can figure it out. Uh, nav container text align left, okay. Uh, that's for a media call, which I still don't totally understand what those are. It has something to do with the size of the windows. I should get back into that. Nav container, it's a block, okay, right? So it should, but that block includes that. Now, how is that? So I'm just gonna mess around. Um, like I'm sure if we put stuff here, I believe. Oh, it's an H3, okay, right. So the H3 does go all the way across. It's a full, that makes perfect sense. Except I don't know why posts isn't. Uh, that's weird. Class nav line items right. Posts. All right, we're totally gonna cheat. Um, yeah, so this H3 is a full, uh, let's look into partial, so here's the partials, here's our partial thing, right, we're in partials, header menu, I'm going to look at that for a second, oh, okay, so it's just the, U. right, sorry, so that partial is just this, it's just this UL right here, right, this unordered list, um, I'm going to cheat here in a second. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do that I think will work. Uh, we'll see in a second. Um, actually, I'm sure it will. I just don't know why that... So this unordered list... Position absolute right. Okay, and this is where I don't write zero. Okay, so that's what's pushing it, I think. Yep. Oh. That's weird. 
see, I, this is where I, I just don't like CSS hooks. Um, but I might have a hack around it, which is going to be get rid of all that stuff, right? So we're back to here. So I want. I was originally thinking I would put it up here because I wasn't sure how I'd get it over on the side, but it's actually even better over on this side. Um, so I think what I can do is go into this parcels menu and if I do this, um, well, let's just find it. Boom, there we go. Uh, Oh, the hover is going over the whole UI. We'll fix that in a second. Um, uh, I actually don't know what the mm, tweeter is. It capitalized? It is capitalized. Okay, that was. So that's where we want to go. Uh, and we need to do amp for the ampersand. No, do you just do at? All right, that's the wrong page. There we go. Oh, so this is also interesting. I don't need posts because that's the same as if you just click on the home page there's no like there's no second level for me everything's sitting up at the top one so even better i can just do this um i am going to save as i just want to copy of this because i all this url stuff in here so this is header menu Original. And we're going to drop all this crap out of that one. Close it. Yes, please. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. Now we're going to go back to our header menu. And we're going to remove the post thing, which we don't need. And there we go. Boop. I can get rid of all this. Um, and cool. Uh, why, what was that doing? Uh, oh yeah. And just, just to show you again, sorry, just to put not too fine a point on it, um, or put a fine point on it. What's super cool about the, the Hugo thing also is, so we've got the it of Allen up here. Um, and I'm just going to do Twitter. And so as soon as I save that, Hugo is going to rebuild the parts of the site that it needs to build, which in this case is all of it because that's the header. Um, and it go that goes across all the pages. And it's also going to communicate with the browser to say, hey, refresh the browser. So normally when I'm working on a bigger monitor, I can keep my... my uh, coding window in front of me and then the um, the browser up on the side with the site on it, um, the local host version of the site. And so what that lets me do is I can type and make some code changes or whatever, hit save, and then about this amount of time later, oh wait, now it's taking a while. Aw. Okay. Hey folks, that's what we call the, there it goes. Whoa, that took a long time. That took a really long time. That's the demo gods. Um, there we go. Mm, let's try this again. All right, one, two, three, save. And there we go. So. Whatever, it's pretty quick. Um, 1,000, yeah, it's about a second, maybe half a second, somewhere in there. Um, 
So that's the other thing that's really nice about Jekyll. I have no idea why it took that long that first time. Sometimes it happens, I guess. Um, it's If I hadn't been demoing it to you, it would have been fine. It would have been fast. Uh, I didn't make the sacrifices to the demo gods that I should have. Uh, cool. Okay, so that's... That's nice. Like I'm good. That's good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Like that's even better than I was thinking. I thought I was gonna have the post up there and uh, and then the the web the Twitter name. And I also I thought the Twitter name was probably gonna be over on the side. Uh, sorry, over on the actually don't know that side. I don't know over here um, behind my name. Like I was thinking it would be a dash and then the thing uh, and then Twitter handle. But I really like this. This is perfect. Um, like so that's. Hey, joys of coding, right? You actually see what's going on and make some changes and do some cool stuff. Um, so there you go. Uh, now we've got the site and we're in good shape. Um, so I'm going to do a deployment. And here's the trick. In order to do the deployment... Um, okay. Is it safe to show your AWS account number. Like, there's a... No account users. Uh, account ID. There you go. This one sounds good. Um, so when you log into Amazon, there's a few things that you have. You have an account ID, you have a username, you have a password, and then uh, a multi-factor authentication, assuming you've got that turned on, which you should. Um, traditionally, I've seen lots of people I've seen lots of people um, hide it. So give me a second. My name's account ID, sure, maybe Brian. Third parties. I'm gonna write a support, but uh, one answer. Okay, so here's the thing. That that's a, that's security through obscurity. And that's not how Amazon operates. Um, it's not how any good security operates. Let me just think through this for a second. Um, like I'm leaning towards that being okay to show. Um, because it's not like, you would need to, so you would need to get into, to get into my account, you would need to have that, that number and then secondarily, you would need to have my username, my password, and my multi-factor multi authentication token. And I'm not like I'm not storing stuff in there that's like private information, like it's my website, and then some backup files. All right, we're gonna be fine. I just I wanted to go through that in my head. Like it's whatever. I'm not gonna promote everybody trying to go fucking hack my account but like I think I think it's I think it's worth the slight increase in risk exposure um, to show you the the steps that I used to actually make the deploy um, now the question is do I show you and then my s3 buckets that I'm not gonna do um, I will set up at some other point. I'll set up another account that's a, that's a not my personal account, but just a basically a test or a demonstration account. And then in there, I'll show you everything. Um, because and so some of it too is I'm looking to do some experimentation to um, to do site deployments. Well, not site deployments, but how to like build sites and how to build networks and stuff. Like I I I want to learn more about the AWS structure and infrastructure. Um, and that, that would be a good way to do it and to cast it and to do it and just to kind of dig stuff out and try and, you know, just like this, just kind of try and do something. Um, so, yeah, I'm, that's fine. I'm fine. Um, 
So this is Envy Alt, this is my grimoire, this is my book of magic. Um, Brett Terpstra, uh, you shall go look for Envy Alt. Um, this is pretty amazing. Um, he's also working on Envy, hey, sorry, that's Envy Alt. He's working on Envy Ultra, the next one up. I can't wait, so good. Um, basically just a whole bunch of text files, but it's where I keep all my notes. Um, so I'm, I've got it tagged for my, the tag is just a, a nonce word, a word that doesn't really mean anything. So Hugo with a dash after it is my Hugo notes. Um, and so the site deploy is our site deploy. Um, and so this, this way I don't have to remember this stuff. Um, I probably could remember some of it or part of it, especially if I did it, or I could make a command that does it. Like I could build a, a, a command like um, in my aliases, uh, in, the, in the command line, you can like make an alias and then do all this stuff. Um, but for me, I, I, like, I really like, even if I did all that stuff, I would still want it here in my notes. Like this is my grounding. Um, for where all my stuff is. Like this is my, uh, I think it's what Cory Doctoro calls the outboard brain. This is where everything goes. Um, so going back to our main site, right? So we, this this is where, oh yeah, you can see all these, all these little um, repetitions here of change detected rebuilding site. That's every time I made a change, that was Hugo respinning up. And you can see like total in time, you know, 200 milliseconds. Um, where's the one that was long? Mm, I'm calling bullshit on one of these. Oh, here. Somewhere I messed something up and it didn't like it, but we got past it. Um, because some of the, like one of those was not 200 milliseconds um, or uh, two tenths of a second. Uh, but anyways, we're back, we're back in Hugo. Uh, sorry, we're back in the prod directory. So uh, in this directory, I just want to run Hugo. Um, so Hugo. And it's going to build the site. One, two, three, go. There's our site. And so that, and it's cool because it built 923 pages, 110 paginated pages, non-page files. I don't, oh, like CSS. It does all the compilation of the CSS and SCSS. I have apparently a thousand images in there. Um, I'll look at the image structure in some other, in some other one of these. Um, I don't know. Cleaned his site. Made a site map for it. Oh, I need to. I need to make. So here's what we should do. Um, where do we want to put this? Uh, ba -ba 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 um, okay, I've got all this stuff that I do when I'm working privately, like sticky notes and BB Edit and like all this other stuff. But I've got a whole bunch of my personal and work stuff on all that thing, on all those things. So I'm not gonna flash those. So what I'm trying to do right now is figure out where I want to put like a little to-do list. Um, uh, we can just put it at the top. Uh, what's in this readme? Directories. Okay, that's fine. Uh, oh yeah, this was when I was doing some other stuff. Um, that was when I was making the move from Jekyll to um, Hugo. Uh, okay, whatever. We're not going to mess with that now. I'll, I'll either remember it or I won't at some point, um, or I'll note it down later. Uh, so we go into the prod directory. We run Hugo. We just did it, but we'll run it again. Build a site. One, two, three, go. And then, so I've got... Oh, uh, MFA token... Okay. Uh, stand by. So the site commands that I'm going to use to make the deployment are the AWS command line tools. UI. Um, which is really good. Uh, these they put a lot of work into this stuff. Um, documentation's great. The, the tools are great. Like it's it's really good stuff. Um, so, but in order to do that, well, so the way the command line tools work is inside your profile for um, uh, for your user agent for you. Uh, on the command line, you set up some configuration things, which are basically tokens that let you um, uh, 
communicate with three sources. That's how you do the authentication. Is authentication or authorization? Authentic well, it's both, both authentication and then authorization. Um, talk to a security person about the difference between those two things. Uh, but, so, and so, but then I've also got MFA on it, multi-factor authentication. So I can't just keep the tokens in there and just have them in there all the time. Basically what happens is, um, uh, every time I want to make one of the S3 commands, oh, I just realized you're going to see my bucket. Okay, that's fine. You'll see one bucket. Um, you'll see where I store, where I store my site. Um, if you're quick, you already saw it. Um, again, that's fine. Like all this stuff is super secure on the Amazon site, but you don't want to do, you don't want to, you don't want to leak exposure whenever you can prevent it. Um, Again, I'm like just knowing my bucket name. Like, if you can if you can get into my bucket by just knowing my bucket name, it's really no skin off my back because it's my website and you can see it all publicly anyways. They're all static files, but that would mean you could get into anything on the Amazon system, and that would be a big deal. Like, holy shit, that would be a big deal. Um, like, you're probably I don't know. I'm not even going to say. Like, I don't even want to... That's not... Um, so anyways, uh, in order in order for me... So I can't... If, if you don't use MFA, you can just put these tokens in uh, in your Amazon command line configuration and go. Um, they'll just work f forever until you change them or, um, uh, or somebody hacks your account. No. Until... Um, well, that's true. Uh, but until you change them. So... But with MFA, you have to get new credentials every 36 hours. Um, or when you get a credential, it will last for up to 36 hours. You get to set the time, but it doesn't last longer than that. Um, I haven't reset the credentials in, or the credentials that I had expired earlier this morning, um, and I haven't reset them. So I need to go re-get the credentials. Um, I'm gonna bounce out of what you can see right now. Like the, the way I've got a, um, uh, a little web page that I built that's got some uh, some code on the back end that actually does the dance to go do the MFA credential thing because you have to like you send up your existing credentials with your MFA token and it gives you back another token that is then what you send like that's the one that gets to work um, and when that happens you have to set up your configuration for your command line tool a little bit differently and then because I'm a little bit nervous about accidentally flashing these credentials, I actually built another script on top of that that actually encodes them. So you can't, if I just happen to flash it, it's not, it's encrypted. Um, the, you could also get the key on the computer. It's not like secure encrypted, but it's encrypted in terms of if, if I flashed it, you wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, or you'd be able to see a gobbledygook, but you wouldn't be able to do anything with it. All that's to say, I'm gonna be right back because I need to go run that command and I've got no problem showing you the MFA token that I'm about to use because it's six, it's six numbers and they change in 30 seconds. But I would also have to show you the username that I use for the account and that I'm not gonna do. Like again, it it's almost certainly fine, but at that point you would have my account ID and my username. You would still need my password and an MFA token. And that MFA token's really like, the giant key to the security there because it's like every 30 seconds. So if you don't have my phone um, and like if you if you hit me over the head with a wrench, I'm going to give you my phone. But short of that, like you're probably unlikely to get access to the MFA token because it's on my phone. Um, but I'm still there's still no there's no there's no reason for me to show you my account ID and I can prevent it. So I am. I can't prevent showing you the, sorry, to my account, my username. I'm gonna show you the account ID because that's part of the code, that, that's like part of the code. Um, and I could I could actually flip that out now that I think about it, whatever, you get the point. I'll be right back. Um, oh, look at that. I'm, <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on two different computers right now. Uh, I'm on one computer. Uh, where I'm doing this coding and I'm on another computer 
where I control uh, the OBS software that's doing the broadcast. So I'm just gonna flip, I don't have a pause screen, so I'm just gonna throw a starting screen. Oh wait, can I? All right, we're gonna see this video capture device. Aha, I can hide the screen, look at that. And then I can actually see the screen over there. Okay, so you all can't see that. Um, I can come over here. So bear with me one second. At least you can still see me typing on a different computer. I'll also, I'll update this MFA thing um, at some point so you can see it uh, without flashing my usernames. Um, what am I doing? Uh, 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 uh. Well, crap. Of course, I'm trying to do it fast, so I'm not going to get to it quickly. Uh, there's that. Bear with me. I should have hold music. Okay, so we can bring this back. Good on you, OBS. Oh, I like having the command. Ah, uh, that's kind of cool. I like having that there. Okay, everything's cool. We all good. Not showing anything I shouldn't. Um, oh, actually, I'm not showing my account ID. I'm showing a distribution ID for CloudFront. Also, we should be fine. Um, I'm assuming. Uh, but so anyways, we ran the Hugo command. We updated the MFA token for our personal site. So I've, I've got a work MFA token and I've got a personal MFA token. And I've actually got another MFA token that we'll use when we do the testing stuff. Um, or when we do the experimentation that I can show you everything on. Um, I just haven't done that yet. Uh, but so now we're on step three, which is run this command. And there's actually two commands here. Um, the first one is size only. So if, if I know that I've only made changes to like one file, and that file uh, is going to have a different size than what's on S3. Uh, it will just send that one file. But because I just made a change that um, that's going to impact everything on the site, I'm actually going to run the second command down here that doesn't have this size only flag. Um, and what this will do is basically push everything up. Um, the the AW, so this is the AWS. So the command the um, the command is AWS, which gets you into the AWS thing, and it's using the S3 environment, and then sync is what it's doing, right? Um, so that's AWS S3 sync, and then I'm going from this local directory, which is that public directory, which is where Hugo builds the static version of the website, to S3 allenwsmith.com dash www. So there's my S3 bucket, by the way. Um, if you hack it, you should get a lot of money from Amazon because that's really impressive. Um, so I'm going to run this one. And the way that the S3 sync commands work is it compares size, but also compares timestamps. So when Hugo runs, it rebuilds the entire site. So the timestamps for all of the Hugo files are in front of all of the timestamps that are actually sitting on the S sitting in the S3 bucket. So um, and because I just ran the whole site and it doesn't take super long. Um, actually, I'll just show you like how long it takes to run um, run the full push. Um, and I'm not running anything else on the site right now, so it should. It, uh, this is how fast my network goes, and it's pushing all the stuff up. Um, so it's decently quick. Um, and again, like it's I've got no problem showing you 100% of this because these are all static files, so you can't do anything with this if you access them. And in fact, if you access, the whole purpose is to be able to access them directly and just have them come right back to you. Um, so there's no there's no security implication to any of this stuff, um, which is just neat. Like I can show you the straight deploy and there's no, and the same thing when working on the site, like I'm not accidentally gonna flash some um, password or to some API somewhere that I've gotten embedded in code for the site because there's no, there's no dynamic thing going on. There's no processing. There's no um, execution. There's no, uh, I'm looking for another word that's not in my head right now. Um, maybe it was execution. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, as we ramble a little bit, there's there's the updated site. 
um, or now all the files have been moved up to the site. Now the other, so uh, this is gonna, like our local host, I've, I've stopped that server. So if I refresh this, it's gonna go away. This, the local server's not running. Um, let me just close all these. <laughs> Otherwise I'll have 1 million tabs open. Um, so the other thing that I do, and we can actually, so I'm gonna check right now. So even though I uploaded the site, this posts is still there, even though we switched it over to the um, the, the Twitter uh, account, the put, put into the Twitter account, pointing to the Twitter username, put into my going to my Twitter account, whatever, going to my Twitter. Um, the reason for that is the way that the the S3 uh, process is set up is there's uh, uh, an Amazon service called CloudFront that sits in front of the S3 bucket that is what does the serving of the website. And um, CloudFront has caching in it. So one of the reasons the site's really fast is CloudFront caches and like, so it hangs on to the processed file or the, the, the file and makes it really easy to kind of shoot out wherever you are. I don't even think I'm using all of the distribution stuff that CloudFront has yet. I need to look more into that, which would be something we can do on these um, or something we will do on these. Um, but what that but what that means, and I could sit here and I hit refresh, and within a few minutes, at the longest, it would come up. I'm not actually going to do that right now. The thing that I'm going to do is run this fourth command or this command from point four. Um, so run the invalidation to clear the cache. So again, AWS for the command line tool, CloudFront, um, which is the other service. So S3 is a service. CloudFront is a service. Um, DynamoDB is a service, uh, Redshift is a service. They've got all these different modules and services that you can access individually and also have them connect and, and talk to each other. So we're gonna hit CloudFront right now and CloudFront is what's, gonna, is what's talking to S3. So our S3 process has been done, it's all up to date. Now we need to go through CloudFront and say, hey CloudFront, all those files that you were hanging on to to serve really fast, flush that cache so that the next time somebody comes in, you go back to, to S3, you grab them, and then you serve those new ones. And that's how we get the new stuff to serve out. Um, and so uh, AWS, CloudFront, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an invalidation. So we're invalidating the cache. Um, distribution ID is you inside CloudFront, and we'll, we'll go through this in one of the setups. Inside CloudFront, you make the distribution, which is basically the like, pointing to the website, I guess is a quick way to talk about that. I, I need to I need to know more about that and then talk more about that because I'm still like, the, I'm still, I, I still don't have my head fully around the distribution aspect of this stuff in terms of what it means and what it is. I just kind of followed some directions and set it up. Um, but then the last thing that you pass it is the paths and the paths I want to go, so slash star, so slash is the root of the site, the very top of it. And then star is everything. Um, so if I only like if I only wanted to invalidate um, that clicky sound file, I could do this um, and do everything under the clicky sound directory. Or if I want to get real specific, I could say I only want to invalidate that one file, the clicky sound index.html. Because remember, we wrote Markdown, but when we ran Hugo, it turned into HTML. So that's the file that's sitting on S3. Um, but I just even if I knew that I, there's only one file that changed, this code is fine, right? I just like, just run this and it'll do it. Like, I don't even know if there'd be a problem if there was 10 million files, it would probably be a bad idea. But like with hundreds, it's not that big a thing. Um, and so you just run this, it gives you some code back. Um, you can actually go track this because it takes a little bit of time to do the invalidation. Um, this, uh, whoop, there's a second mouse that you guys can't see that's in front of my screen there. Um, you can track back with this ID and actually keep calling another process with this ID and maybe something else to get the invalidation status. Um, I usually just wait about 30 seconds and then go and hit refresh. Uh, and we've been, and so it might have already refreshed and cleared the cache without us having to do that. But now we know that we flush the cache, like so. It's a, it's just a good step to do. It'll get emptied eventually. But the it, I, 
there's the, I think it's in Python, like the idea of explicit versus implicit. Like implicitly it will happen at some point, but we're gonna ex explicitly make it happen right now um, or, have a, or trigger it and then it'll take a little time to do it. But so if we refresh, three, two, one, there we go. So we're live. Um, we're on the site, that's it, we got it. Um, and just to make sure if I click, it goes to the right place. Hooray. Uh, if I click here, yep, still works. Uh, just kind of the sanity check, whatever, go somewhere, make sure. Um, Ta-da. Oh, that's when I added a RSS feed to my Jekyll feed, which is something I have to do for this one because there's not a... Uh, RSS didn't come out of the box with this one. So, And again, that's another one of the things where it's like it's a finicky techie thing. I want to have RSS on the site. WordPress does that out of the box, or at least it used to. I'm assuming it still does. Um, very few people use RSS anymore, but I want to have it because I want those people that do to have access to my stuff. And I also want to promote the idea of getting back into it. So like if more of us do stuff like have RSS, other people stumble into RSS readers and like, oh, this is a great way to do it instead of like having like, I control the, what the content that's coming down to me and I get to filter it and look at it the way that I want. It's not the Facebook algorithm or the Twitter algorithm or whatever. Like it's, 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 person to person um, uh, communication or, or, or uh, content delivery. I don't know, that sounds gross. Um, but anyways, uh, so I think that'll probably do it. That was a long hour to, um, to change one thing on a website, uh, but that's kind of how this goes, right? So um, if, if I wasn't, talking and doing all this stuff, it would have gone much faster, but that's like, I enjoy this. So, uh, cool. Uh, I should stop talking about the meta stuff and just say, um, thanks folks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. The, uh, I'm going to start doing this a fair amount more. Um, the, especially now that I've got a setup that's going, cause it took me an hour or two today to kind of get the stuff wired. I'm not as worried right now looking at the, at the, at the blurriness, I don't think it's awful. Um, I'm gonna have some people kind of check for me. I also see if I can get it sharper because it looks much sharper on the actual on the actual Mac. Um, and if I can improve it, cool. If I can't, I'm gonna keep doing it. Like uh, like I, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make progress instead of trying to wait for perfection. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we'll do this again sometime soon. I that was the wrong mouse button in order for me to get out. So here's the right mouse button or the right mouse. There's two mice. Um, Mises. Uh, all right, folks, take it easy. We'll see you around.